Hi, everyone. Kate Bohr and Fiona Pierman joining you for this week's Facebook Live, where we're continuing our conversation around perfectionism. And today we want to talk about the role that leaders and organisations can play on supporting women to really lean in and reframe their relationship with perfectionism. I think leaders have such an opportunity here um, when we look and when we unpack what's going on around this particular topic. It's often that it's not, we're not clear on the expectations, the standards that are required, what's important, what's the appropriate level for this particular project, for this uh, this activity that we're doing. And so often people are overdoing things and wasting effectively time and resources. I think as a leader, you have a chance to role model this. You have a chance to talk into, you know, this particular activity, you know, we're going for a seven out of 10. We're just doing a base level. We're not trying to do this perfectly because we're going to iterate. We're going to change things as we go. And letting others understand that not everything has to be done perfectly is really important. Yeah, I think that's a really important um, awareness piece here around there is often a lot of unspoken or assumptions made um, around what done looks like. So being really clear on uh, what is required, what is expected, uh, what standards are on particular things. I think there can be a tendency to um, apply sort of one standard, one level, uh, you know, everything needs to be done a certain way. And in most organisations, um, there are some deliverables that require, you know, the 10 or 12, 12 out of 10, and there's other deliverables where, you know, good is good is done. So as a leader, even to think about what that looks like, to apply that um, uh, variable, uh, to when we are delegated and when we are talking about what we're expecting to see um, so that everyone is really clear about the effort, uh, the outcome that uh, individuals are able to self-assess, to review their work and to be able to identify um, when they're done and then to be able to come to you and get that feedback um, and, and ideally on the lower side, right, rather than um, having invested a ton of time because the, and we talked about this in earlier weeks, the opportunity cost is they're spending time doing things that is low value or no value and they could be working on other things. So when capacity, resource constrained organisations, which are most most organisations these days, is a, key, um, is a key issue, our ability to help right size, to help uh, individuals really be clear about what is required, what is valued, um, so that they can apply the appropriate uh, level of effort and activity to deliver what is required is really critical. I think the next piece is about making it safe. Um, you know, we know that sometimes we can spend tons of time uh, unnecessarily uh, getting it perfect or knowing the answer when actually it would be totally acceptable to not be able to not to know the answer or to not have it um, completely right for there to be some mistakes or there's some pieces of feedback that you will give and so um, you know I, I often say to our team you know I want to see it when it's a five when it's a five out of ten um, that helps me do a couple of things. It helps me understand what their version of five is and what my version of five is, and then we can have good conversations around that. Um, but it also helps me then be able to figure out what more that I want done. Um, because I think sometimes we, in, in today's world, we are delegating things that we don't have clear line of sight over. Um, and actually what we're really doing is co-creating outcomes with our with our people. Yeah, I think this dovetails really well into a principle that's really important for leaders now around becoming a good coach. How do I coach my team members? How do I coach the people who are working with me to understand what's required? How do I ask good questions so that together we're solving this problem and we're talking about it up front and at check-in points along the way rather than allowing things to get away from us and potentially a whole lot of wasted time um, going in a direction that actually isn't adding sufficient value. I think in order to do that, part of the questioning, part of the um, helping people understand what's required is allowing them to not do it perfectly, to get things wrong, um, that there's a certain amount of psychological safety that's required. So being able to talk into that, to let people know, you know, I'm not expecting you to do this in this way. Um, I want to help us solve this in the most time efficient way. Actually talking in that language helps people understand what it is you're aiming for. Mm -hmm. And I think 
for organizations generally, this piece about psychological safety is incredibly important. We say that creating a culture of psychological safety is one of our goals. It's one of the things, it's a value that we want to be able to do. And it's important to be able to walk that talk, to be explicit about standards, to be explicit that in certain situations, it's okay to make mistakes and learn from them, to adopt a growth mindset. We work with a lot of organizations that want to adopt a growth mindset, this is actually letting go of perfectionism is, perfectionism is one of the big ways we can do that really effectively. Yeah, I think um, as leaders asking good questions, becoming great coaches, um, this is the opportunity. For many of us, uh, you know, our model of success, our formula uh, of doing a good job of often um, being rewarded, recognised, promoted was because we were experts. We did things perfectly. And certainly early in career, um, we have more capacity to do that. And the opportunity cost of doing that isn't as high. But the more that we progress, uh, the more that we actually do need to build uh, the capability to be able to moderate, to be able to have those good uh, conversations to proactively come to our leaders and say, hey, um, you know, help me understand what's required here. What is what is it that you need? What is it that my stakeholders need? Um, so being able to have really good conversations to shift mindsets. A lot of the piece around perfectionism is often deeply ingrained. It's been rewarded. Um, it's been my formula for success. So I almost on autopilot default to that, um, particularly when I'm under, under times of stress. So the opportunity for leaders and then equally you know, for the culture of the organisation is to start to open up a really good dialogue um, to encourage, you know, our people to come to us, to have good conversations, um, to get really clear around what success looks like, what done looks like. Yeah, I think lots to dig in with this one, lots of ways in which you can support your people um, and you can proactively think about the culture you're creating in each of those conversations each time you're taking on new things. Um, we're going to leave it there. If you enjoyed today's conversation, feel free to share it with a friend or colleague who'd benefit. Um, follow us on our Facebook um, page to learn more about our work um, or head over to our YouTube channel where there's literally hundreds of videos you can tap into. Um, when you're ready, to go deeper with your relationship with Core Confidence, you can visit our website, coreconfidence.com.au.